Hi, I'm Kirk Jowers, and welcome to the April 15th Frequently Asked Questions episode with Dr. Russell Osgathorpe, MD. And Dr. O, we've been sheltering in place for, in many, for many of us, several weeks now, and those questions and frustrations are coming out in some of the questions we're receiving. Sure. One question that arises from that is why have places like Northern Italy, New York, New Orleans, mm -hmm. and a few others been hit so hard? I think it has to do with a couple of things. When the virus showed up in those communities, generally earlier, right. when social distancing measures were put in place, how effective populations were at following those measures once they were put in place, and lastly, the nature of the city in question. So, for instance, Manhattan is one of the most densely populated places in our country, and dense population allows for viral circulation. The virus was probably circulating there early, and it got a foothold and was able to expand rapidly and infect lots of people before we could really put that cat back in the bag. Some other places were able to more effectively slow the spread of the virus. And that is the perfect segue into really the second question is, why are the peaks of hospitalizations and deaths in many places right. still yet to come? They were projecting them to perhaps be in April and now they're putting them to May and even June. That's the beauty of social distancing is, is that when we say flatten the curve, what we're meaning is, is that the peak actually flattens and changes as well. So the peak of illness is going to move as our social distancing uh, measures are put in place. And the fact that we're moving our peaks to the right quote unquote, or further out, right. means that we are being effective at slowing the spread of the virus. And in many parts of the United States, I would say that we are being effective. And I, it's, it's evidence that social distancing works. Everything that we've been doing has worked. And uh, some people wonder if, if we should change that dynamic. We were so effective that maybe it's getting too far pushed out. I know you may have a strong opinion here, but I have to ask, assuming we get to a point when hospitals and healthcare providers can handle a surge, so obviously not now, but maybe in the summer, people are wondering whether they should host a version of chickenpox parties mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> where non-infected people mingle with an infected person in an effort to catch the virus. And the point, I guess, is for more people to get it and develop an immunity and then put it behind us? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, no on, on many levels. Uh, one, chicken pox parties, as you so called them, are really bad. I've taken care of kids in hospitals who've gone to those. And I never, ever will recommend that we do that. In terms of COVID and whether you should purposefully expose yourself to a COVID case, uh, the answer is still an emphatic no from me. Uh, COVID has a measurable mortality rate, meaning that we can measure the rate at which people die when they catch this virus. And I would never knowingly do something like that uh, to those that I love or myself. Well, thank you. And, and as our episodes become less regular due to the maturing of the pandemic worldwide, I want to thank you for engaging with us. And Russ, I'm going to let you sign off with any final words. Thanks. There's a quote that I came across with the pandemic that uh, you shared with me, actually, that I really enjoyed from Mike Levitt, former Secretary of Health and Human Services for the United States. And he said, everything we do before a pandemic will seem alarmist, and everything we do after a pandemic will seem inadequate. I think it's important to state that everything we do during a pandemic will likely be felt by those experiencing the pandemic to either fall into one of those two baskets as well. During a pandemic, everything we do will either be seen as alarmist or inadequate. This has been a, a really good exercise for all of us to think about what's most important in life. And I would say that it's important that we try as much as we can to go through it together. Thank you very much and be safe everyone.